Have McLaren finally rattled Red Bull? In a season of unprecedented dominance for Max Verstappen, it's been rare to see him actually have to defend the lead from another car, or debate with his engineer whether he needs to speed up to get the job done. But thanks to the incredible efforts of McLaren and Lando Norris, that's the situation F1's Triple World Champion now finds himself in, actually having to think about another competitor rather than just disappearing off into the distance. Ever since its mid-season upgrade, McLaren has looked like a team transformed into something that can genuinely beat Aston Martin, Ferrari and Mercedes and be best of the rest. But recently, McLaren has started to look like something even more than that. Christian Horner feels McLaren is now Red Bull's closest competitor and he's justified in feeling this way. Since that Austrian Grand Prix upgrade, McLaren is F1's second highest scoring team, amassing 25 points more than Ferrari, 50 points more than Mercedes and 158 points more than Aston Martin over the past 11 races. Over a single lap in qualifying, McLaren has started to look like a potential Red Bull beater. Oscar Piastri and Lando Norris have both taken a sprint race pole position this season and Norris was almost a tenth and a half clear of Verstappen in Friday's Q2 session for the Brazilian Grand Prix before a storm blew in and messed McLaren up in Q3. But beating a Red Bull in qualifying isn't the true stress test of where you're at. Ferrari has taken several pole positions this season, but usually then goes backwards in the races. Even Lewis Hamilton's dog of a Mercedes has been on pole once this year, but again, he didn't even come close to challenging Verstappen for victory. Even when it has dominated, the RB19's pace advantage in qualifying has invariably been less than on race day. Red Bull deliberately configured this car and its predecessor around the demands of the race, on the logical basis that if overtaking was going to be easier under F1's new ground effect rules, qualifying's importance was surely reduced. In Brazil, we got four race stints where Red Bull's fastest driver and McLaren's fastest driver went head to head in a straight fight, using pretty much identical tyre strategies too and the sum total of that was the McLaren giving away just over a tenth per lap over 92 laps of racing. In this video, we're going to explore where McLaren might find that missing tenth and a bit of lap time and what else it needs to do to become a proper Red Bull beater. The most encouraging thing for McLaren compared to Ferrari, Mercedes and Aston Martin is that McLaren has consistently bought upgrades to its car that have delivered clear steps in performance. This suggests a team that has a much stronger understanding of its strengths and weaknesses compared to the past. The phase summer upgrades brought a huge step forward in pure lap time, while a further major update for Singapore is credited by team principal Andrea Stella for significantly improving McLaren's tyre management. The McLaren has always been super fast in high speed sections. Norris reckons it's still not good in slow corners, but there wasn't much evidence of that in Brazil. It looked good everywhere, strong on every type of corner and able to match or even beat the lap times of the Red Bull. In both the sprint race and the Grand Prix itself, Norris was quick enough to threaten Verstappen, requiring Max to think strategically about how best to utilise his own tyres and also deploy his Honda Power Unit's recovered energy. But crucially, Verstappen still had something in reserve to make sure he wasn't eaten up by the McLaren. Norris feels the Mercedes engine in his McLaren is every bit as good as the Honda powering the Red Bull, so this remaining race pace deficit comes down to chassis and driver. And although running behind other cars tends to hurt the tyres more than running in clean air, Stella remains unconvinced the McLaren in its current guise could beat the Red Bull if only it could somehow gain track position. He feels the RB19 is superior in how it limits the amount the tyres lose grip over a stint and strongly hinted at some fundamental architecture on the current McLaren limiting his team's capacity to react and close the gap. Stella was extremely coy when asked in Brazil how much of Red Bull's apparent tyre degradation advantage over McLaren relates to aerodynamics and how much relates to mechanical grip. He was only prepared to say it's a combination of both. He indicated McLaren has set some targets in terms of developing its way out of this problem but added I can't say in which area and how. But he did at least confirm McLaren's area of focus is not only aero. Obviously, Stella doesn't want to give away McLaren's key 2024 development priorities to a bunch of nosy and loose-lipped journalists, but his careful answers still offer some important clues. Stella was also asked about Red Bull's clever rear suspension layout, which is considered to be a vital component in stabilising the RB19's aero platform and allowing it to produce more downforce more consistently than other cars, while also meaning Red Bull can run smaller wings for a straight-line speed boost. In response to a direct question about the importance of mechanical development, given the apparent source of Red Bull's advantage, Stella described the suspension as very important because it enables aerodynamic development and plays a fundamental role in what he called tyre utilisation. 
Suspension is not easy to develop, especially in season, so any significant work in this area needs to be done early and locked in before the rest of the car's development path is set. As Stella puts it, aerodynamic components are much more susceptible to development than evolving suspensions. So the focus of any F1 team will naturally be on developing the components that are much easier to develop, like the bodywork parts. But getting the right suspension layout is critical in unlocking potential for that aerodynamic development, and this will then also have a compound benefit on tyre life over a stint, because the better your mechanical platform is and the more stable your aero platform is, the less likely you are to slide and overheat the tyres. It sounds easy, but of course it's anything but simple. Ferrari appear to have a reasonably strong mechanical and aero platform in 2022, but attempts to make the car less draggy over the winter completely scrambled the picture, turning the Ferrari into a peaky and inconsistent car to drive. Mercedes tried what Toto Wolff now calls sticking plaster solutions with revised bodywork, floor and front suspension on this year's W14, as it sought to change course completely and reverse out of its unique zero pod concept. But that team's disaster class in Brazil shows how quickly even a major strength, like the car's ability to look after its tyres over a race distance, can turn into a crippling weakness. Stellar field suspension will be a major focus for every team over the winter of 2023, so we can take that to mean McLaren too. And if Stella's team can achieve the sort of progress in that area of the car that it has clearly managed so well with this year's in-season aero development, then no wonder Lando Norris feels excited by what's to come in 2024. Norris feels the most on top of the car I have ever been, and after being masked at times in recent Formula 1 races, this was in full view at the Brazilian Grand Prix. He enjoyed a substantial advantage over teammate Oscar Piastri, and the gap between them shows the difference Norris can make at his best. Since McLaren's mid-season upgrade, Norris has tended to be at the upper limit of what the car is capable of. The second big package in Singapore, for instance, sparked a run of four consecutive podiums. Since the summer break, Norris has been inconsistent in qualifying, getting beaten by Piastri in Grand Prix qualifying sessions four times over the past eight races, and that run includes Norris having a race's head start on the last big upgrade. But in terms of Grand Prix results in the same span, Norris is 7-1 to the good, Qatar being the only time Piastri was the first McLaren home. Lando's race pace has been consistently and noticeably stronger than Piastri's, even in Qatar, where Norris was told to hold station behind his teammate. Lando puts his clicking with the McLaren down to figuring out weaknesses that I have with the car and increased confidence. Stella puts the improvement down to a virtuous circle created by the Singapore upgrade increasing the MCL 60's capacity for tyre management. The car is now fundamentally better at looking after its tyres and so Norris has been able to, in Stella's words, cash in on that improved capability. Norris has spoken frequently about how difficult the McLaren is to drive, how he would like to be able to carry more corner speed in a U style, but is forced more into veeing off the corners by the car's limitations. Stella feels McLaren's upgrades this season, particularly since Singapore, have given Norris a car that allows him to do a little bit more of what he wants, and so he's taking advantage in order to stress the tyre less. Norris has been vocally critical of himself recently for what he calls silly mistakes that have cost him better grid positions in qualifying. This is one aspect of Lando's skill set that Stella thinks can be improved simply by his driver taking a step back and not trying too hard to go full tilt in the early stages of qualifying sessions, when all that's required is progressing to the next phase rather than going to the absolute limit of the car. But as Norris showed in Brazil, whether he started behind Verstappen or ahead of him, the McLaren wasn't good enough off the start line to get ahead or stay there, even when McLaren threw its only new set of soft tyres onto the car for the red flag restart while Verstappen's Red Bull was on old softs. Red Bull has done a lot of work on Verstappen's starts this year, modifying the clutch settings and how the engine delivers its power in order to give Verstappen the best traction he can have after the initial launch off the grid. The McLaren still looks relatively weak in this area, and Norris will need to play a key part in developing that aspect too, given how specific the start procedure is to each driver. Obviously, there is also the danger that McLaren looks artificially close to Red Bull right now, because the development of RB19 has been mostly deprioritised this season so Red Bull can get ahead on developing its successor, RB20. But, as Horner points out, at some point the returns are going to diminish for Red Bull because, as he puts it, it will hit the top of the curve in terms of its own car development. Horner thinks the field will then concertina and become closer. When that happens, McLaren needs to be ready to strike first. <laughs>